Greetings everyone, this is Stanley Mass in Ohio 330, you already know what it is, and you're watching Sweat the World. I mean, music has always been the love of, you know, something that I've loved and something that I, um, you know what I mean, it was a way of me to express myself and to get my thoughts out. Um, I didn't really know the structure of music, I didn't know how to write 16s and hooks and stuff as of yet, but as I went into the studio and spent time, I, I, I got to really fall in love with the whole process of making a song, coming up with concepts, putting together albums or mixtapes, and um, you know, that's when I fell in love. Also, you know, I did the six track EP, and most deaf heard it and he was like, yo, you got something, like, you know what I mean? He was like, you're nice, you need to continue to do that. And for most deaf to say that to me, it was very inspiring because most is someone who um, is that, you know, someone I admire growing up, someone I listen to and I appreciate his music. So for him to kind of give me that, go ahead, like keep doing what you're doing because you, you got something. It was like, that's what really forced me. I mean, not forced me, but that's what really, you know, made me force my hand and stay in the studio and grind it out and, you know, start pursuing the music. Um, but it had to be natural. Music just came natural. And again, it was just like something that was there. It wasn't forced. So, um, you know, when I, I started to pursue that, everything came organically, everything built organically. And then it was just like, keep going. But when I got signed, it was like, man, I still want more, you know, like, cause you know, your dream is to go to the NBA or your dream is to be a signed artist. But once you get there and you, you um, accomplish that goal, it's like, man, there's still so much more to get. Like if you make it to the NBA, you don't want to just be there sitting on the bench. You want to play, you want to be MVP. You want to make it to all-star games. You want to get rings. And then it's the same with music. Like you don't want to just be signed and just say I'm signed and I'm with you know Maybach Music. You want to be the best artist. You want to get Grammys. You want to sell millions of records. You want to tour the world. Like so, it's just that's the savage journey. Today I'm with uh, Stiley and Jonathan Mannion and it's a uh, distinct honor to be among uh, two people that I really value as very important in the game. Uh, Jonathan Mannion being a legendary photographer who's captured so many classic moments in hip hop that I've witnessed before I even knew who he was. And um, Staley, who's been a friend of mine for uh, many years. And uh, now really he's just doing an amazing job at it with his music and you know how he carries his life. And I thought it would be great to bring Staley and Jonathan Manning together, seeing they're both from Ohio. And, uh, you know, they're getting a chance to meet for the first time and, you know, really clicking. And I see them doing some amazing stuff in the future as well. So uh, just a proud moment of mine in, you know, my short life to uh, bring something like this together. Yo, this is Sweat the World. I'm Jonathan Manning. Stick with us, man. You're going to want to get inspired. I moved to New York in 1993 way back when to, to actually work with this guy named Richard Avedon, who's arguably the greatest to ever touch a camera. You know, working for Avedon was like, you know, the, the only way I can correlate it is like learning basketball from Michael Jordan, you know what I mean? So like being in that arena and being able to kind of grow into, you know, sort of who I would become was guided by like the best of the best, you know? So I, I think that that was really you know, what kind of kicked it all off. My, my interest was always in music and, and specifically hip hop. Like from 88, 89, like I just fell in love and I figured out what my contribution would be. And it was a visual contribution because I don't feel like people were really telling the stories in the right way. You know, so I guess it was, that was my goal. You know, my, my big break 
taking any of the photo shoots that I did early on, whether it was, you know, Tyra Banks for the cover of a magazine or like D'Angelo or something like that. You know, all of these were accomplishments, but, you know, obviously the biggie was Jay-Z Reasonable Doubt, you know, and, and his loyalty, you know, to me over the next 10 years was, you know, unparalleled. I think even probably to this day, you know. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, did Jay-Z's albums, all right, who did that? Okay, we got this other kid called DMX, all right. The DMX, and then it was Ja Rule, and then it was Nelly, and then it was Snoop, and, you know, I think it was about the midpoint in my career that I realized, you know, I could shoot everybody. Like, yo, I'm gonna go for it. Let me define hip-hop visually, at least one sort of, you know, layer of it, you know? It's not single-handed, but uh, it certainly is a solid contribution to the game. See, seeing a hometown hero, man, and seeing somebody else come out of Cleveland, you know, Maslin, you know, 330, I'm an old school 216 into 440, you know, like we all in the same family, but, you know, I really have to say hearing his story, and we've been speaking back and forth, but, you know, I'm really dying to work with Stally.